16 years ago, fresh out of college, a 22-year-old intern in the White House, and more than averagely romantic, I fell in love with my boss in a 22-year-old sort of way. Back then, in 1995, we started an affair that lasted on and off for two years. And at that time, it was my everything. Overnight, I went from being a completely private figure to a publicly humiliated one. I was patient zero. All right, folks. Uh, yesterday, Monica Lewinsky uh, established a Twitter account, and uh, she made these remarks at uh, a Forbes event. And uh, rejoining us on the panel is uh, Rick Unger, senior political contributor for Forbes.com, and uh, Seton Motley, uh, founder of Less Government. <coughs> so, uh, Rick, why do you think uh, she decided to, uh, to go public at this time? Well, first, I want to thank her for doing it at a Forbes event. We appreciate it. Uh, secondly, I don't, you know... Was she paid for that? I don't know, to okay. be honest okay. with you. Uh, possibly, but okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, it's really odd timing. I mean, she does indicate that she wanted to come out against cyberbullying, and that's her thing, and that's terrific. Uh, she has to know that by inserting herself back into a public debate, everybody who's grown sympathetic towards her is going to have some questions. I have some questions. Why now? Why two years before the next presidential election, and why probably just three or four months before Hillary Clinton announces. It's very odd to well, say the Se least. Well, Seton, uh, I, I don't, you know, she blames Drudge, the Drudge Report. I don't blame the Drudge Report. Uh, I blame the people who trashed her and made her into this, you know, wretched wench, lying, fantasizing nut job. Um, and uh, maybe she has an axe to grind with Hillary. I'll say the same thing about the internet that I say th about guns. Hate the vice, not the device. Uh, it's not Drudge's fault. It's not the internet's fault. Uh, it was uh, the Hillary Clinton, James Carville, Sidney Blumenthal, nuts and sluts approach to handling uh, Bill Clinton's many, 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 many dalliances dall uh, that are to blame for what happened to her. Uh, be above and beyond, of course, her stupidity for getting involved with the most prominent married man on the planet. Um, who probably cheated on Hillary at, a, at their wedding reception, but um, this is this is her fault. This is the uh, the Team Clinton Inc. takedown uh, uh, cabal that exists and existed and probably still exists uh, to deal with with Hit Clinton's uh, many affairs. So yeah, to, to blame the internet and to blame Matt Drudge is he's about 45th and the internet's 42nd on the list of, of culpable individuals. All right, but she, she does have a good goal if it's uh, to, to address uh, cyberbullying and all that. All right, let's, let's move on. The, the Department of Homeland Security today came up with a new guideline. Starting tomorrow, uh, anybody traveling from West Africa into this country uh, will have to arrive at one of five airports. Um, you know, of course, uh, we're going to speak to Senator Grassley later. Uh, he wrote a letter with uh, the other Republicans on the Judiciary Committee saying, you know, that's not enough. We need a travel ban. And he used the president's own words, uh, passwords, addressing Ebola in that argument. Uh, so, so uh, Rick, um, uh, why do you think, uh, well, you know, they decided on this all these days later? It's interesting. In reality, we are inching ever so close to a travel ban. Those five airports that were chosen happen to be the airports where virtually everybody who comes in from that part of the world comes through. They're not really flying into Cleveland. They're flying into these yeah, Dulles, O'Hare, uh, Newark, yeah. Atlanta, and JFK. Yeah, so, so by... By choosing those five airports, you're effectively, not completely, but effectively putting that travel ban in place. You know, it seems to me you might as well go the whole distance at this point. I know that the medical community says it isn't necessary, and I, I have little doubt that they're right. But at this point, to continue this, this silly argument, when a month of, of, of taking the visas out of circulation from West Africa, oh, go ahead and do it. You've really done it with these five uh, airports anyhow. I want you to weigh in on that, uh, Seton. But also, maybe we could ask the uh, Ebola czar at the congressional oversight hearings today. Oh! Up. He can't make it. Why I forgot. Would Why would he? He hasn't even started yet. What does he know? What does he know? That's, yeah. the, that's the point. Seaton? Well, what would any of them know? Well, th well, w what we should do is stop accept, uh, issuing visas and stop um, 
accepting passports from the affected countries. My question with patient zero, which is uh, Mr. the late Mr. Duncan, is he was an unemployed person with a, a Liberian passport but living in Ghana with a sister who lived here. He was a visa violator waiting to happen. How did he get a visa and in the first place, Ebola aside? Well, that's, uh, that speaks to the whole <laughs> let's immigration see if we can, problem Let's see we if have. we can find a way to get all possible elements of conservative politics into this question. You got guns into the last one, which I thought was pretty good. Let's get guns into this one. Can we do it? Well, first of all, the guy, the guy was going to be prosecuted in Liberia if he lived yes, he for, was. For, 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 for lying. For lying. Uh, so it, it shows it, it can be done. But i we can find a way to get every possible well, argument he's, he's, into he's these right. questions. Se Seton's right. I mean, this guy had no business uh, getting a visa to come into this country well, anyway. Well, apparently he qualified for yeah, one, well, didn't that's, he? Well, that's the problem. All right, guys. He did illegally. Se Seton Motley visa. and Rick Unger, got to go. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to talk to Alveda King. She is next. Uh, but right now, let's take a look at uh, the Alaska governor's race uh, with our countdown to the midterms update. It's coming up next. We do this uh, every day. We focus on various races around the country, and we're headed to Alaska right now. The gubernatorial race in Alaska started out as you might expect. There was a Republican and a Democrat, both easily won their primaries and were set to square off on the campaign trail, with incumbent Sean Parnell predicted to slide right back in for a second term. But now that Election Day is nearly here, that suddenly isn't the case anymore. Not long after the August primaries, Alaska's Democratic Party voted to reject their candidate, Brian Malott. They didn't kick him to the curb. Instead, they relegated him to run as lieutenant governor to independent Bill Walker. Republicans didn't waste any time challenging the newly formed ticket by filing a lawsuit against state election. Officials were allowing this unusual merger to happen. Alaska's Supreme Court upheld the ticket. The shakeup raised a few eyebrows, considering a year prior, the Alaska Democratic Party unanimously voted to back Malat for governor. However, recent polls show that the move may pay off. Walker is building support and is now in a comfortable lead over Parnell. But Parnell may not be out of it just yet. There's still a significant amount of undecided voters out there who just may end up turning the tide in favor of Parnell.